Okay guys, uh, just thought I'd send a little video up of the 7 Marine electronics. When I was looking at purchasing 7 Marine, I looked at the engines, there's lots of videos on the engines and photos and information about the engines of course, but no one seemed to have any videos posted about the electronics and quite frankly, it's not just the engines that are really amazing on the boat, the whole package is really good from the, the shifting, which we'll talk a little about in the future here, as well as the electronics package. Um, I really enjoy the package you put together, it's really intuitive, user, user friendly, and uh, you know, easy to use. So I thought I'd make a little video just electronics, so if anybody's interested in knowing more about them, you can see here. Hopefully the video comes out and is uh, focused, it's a little hard to shoot video this close. Uh, it's a little windy out here today as well, so hopefully the wind isn't going to come up in the microphone speaker. So this is the main screen you get when you uh, start the submarine system up, it comes with this screen. A couple of really nice things about this screen, number one, you notice the upper left hand corner is the engine start stop. So it turns out you actually can start and stop the engines from here by pressing uh, either the, the, touch, the touch screen actually does work as well, but these keys are really nice on the sides because they're you know hard you know buttons that you put your hand on here the boat's moving and bumping around if you want to change settings or something while you're working and driving the boat the vessel you actually can do that really easy under under XCs. but to start the boat you just go into the start menu you can see that you can stop the engine from here or start the engine uh, right now the boat's not quite in the water but i'll start it you'll get to hear, hear the sounds of the engines here pretty substantial as you can tell so all I need to do is start them up. Right now, it's, like I said, the boat's not in the water, so it's a little bit louder because the exhaust is uh, not underwater. But um, to start the boat, so all you need is go there. The back button always takes you back to the uh, this screen here. This button here takes you back to the main menu. So uh, really nice and intuitive way to get back to the main menu is by hitting this button. The second button is the gauge display. So this allows you to get back to that screen you saw. This is predominantly where you're going to drive the boat mostly. This one in a secondary screen I'll show you in just a moment. In addition to that, back of the home screen, there is the service reminder. Really nice button. Basically it keeps track of how many hours you have since you had service and how many hours are remaining since service. I just had the 50 hours service done well, a couple hours ago. So you can see that my hour will have 46 hours remaining for my engine oil, for example. And that service will be done in 100 hours. I have my gear casing 100 hours and 300 hours for the transmission oil. So it kind of keeps track of how much time I have for each of the services uh, that are on here. And it's really nice because I can switch between this engine and the other engine, 54 hours on the starboard, 55 hours on the port, as you can see. Just a nice, easy way. And to show you again, touch screen, if I want, I can actually touch the actual engine and it'll change to port and change back to starboard. So the screen is touch screen as well. You can see the arrow, I can scroll up and down, for example, reset these settings once the boat is uh, serviced. I can reset this, it'll reset this panel so it knows to go the next interval in hours. So really nice uh, display for controlling and monitoring the, uh, the engines themselves. A um, Couple other things that are nice about it. That's the service reminders. User settings, if you do want to make any changes to it, for example, night and day vision, there's a couple ways that you can do that from a shortcut key as well. But also you can change the display brightness, the units, of course, then change the prop. So the boat usually had 28 pitch props on it. Uh, we're actually on a yellow fin, a 36 foot yellow fin here. And we played with 26s and 24s. You can change the prop and the gear ratio and stuff from the uh, drives here. Uh, I have a 20% fuel alert. You also can set the engine trim zero. So you want to trim the engines out so that they're set at zero when they actually need all the way down. You can, you can adjust some of that here. And you know, the, uh, the menu actually is adjustable on the screen here or these buttons control the same arrows. So back to the main screen. Diagnostics, this will actually go ahead and run diagnostics on the engine. I had had a little uh, issue earlier on. You can see the error code is still up here. It has to do with one of the engines uh, had a high uh, coolant temperature, and so it did warn me about that. So the, te the temperature got to 221 degrees, and while I was running the boat, it popped up and showed me that. Um, so it's a nice little diagnostic system so that if someone comes to take a look at the engine, you can always show them here's the warnings and stuff you had. So going back to the main menu. So the way you get to that screen display when you're running the boat again is you go to the display. Now right here, when the boat is actually under operation, there are tack indicators here basically showing you the RPMs and there's two gauges there's a green bar and a red bar it's also I think a blue bar if you have three engines this boat only has two but both bars actually will move simultaneously and when they're in sync they're both lined up of course the number of gallons remaining you can touch this um, and reset the trip fuel or sorry set, set up the trip fuel since I just refueled I've only done 67 gallons out of the trip out of the tank since I've done that um, if you touch this again I think there you go shows me different engines 
and I can go back to the center engine, for example, how much I've used and not. So you can kind of touch the screen, do a few things. One of the real nice things about this screen is these bar graphs. So really, really handy way to make sure everything is looking correct. It's kind of a military standard where all the bars should be in the middle, all the way down green, halfway. So what you do is you quickly scan down, make sure every bar is actually green halfway through. If anything is off to the right hand side, um, and the green bar is actually longer, it turns red, and you can see if there's an issue there. Um, if the bars aren't lined up, then one of the engines might be hotter than the other one, one might have lower oil pressure, for example, if one's lower to the left. So a really nice way to just quickly scan, make sure all the engine uh, configuration information is, um, is operating normally. It also has trim indicators here. Now what I'm going to find is when I start the boat, I tend to keep this screen on. I tend to run this for a few minutes until the engines are indeed warmed up and everything does look good. But then I actually switch over to this screen here. This screen here is better for running. It shows you obviously your miles per hour. It shows each engine RPM. It shows the trim indicator. So if I do trim the engines up, of course when you're running you can make sure they're trimmed the same. But one other thing is really clever, uh, a couple things actually, uh, it has this water um, uh, pressure essentially. So this is the amount of water pressure that's being pushed into the engine for coolant. And the trim is, the more you trim the boat, and, or less trim, it depends on where the, the, the trim is at, it turns out that the water pressure will change. And so you can trim the boat a bit by water pressure. One other thing they have up in the upper left hand corner, a little hard to see, it's grayed out here, is slip indication. So that shows you the actual prop slip in the water. So you're not really tri trimming the boat for any specific number. What you're trying, trying to do is trying to trim the boat so that the slip of the prop is as low as possible. So you may have, a, say, a 10 or 12 degree slip. If you're up in the 20 degree slip, you probably need to trim the engines up or down to get them to bite the water a little bit more. So you're really trimming for the, 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 the least amount of slip you want, which is gonna give you the most fuel economy, which is on the upper right hand corner. So really intuitive screen. When running the boat, you're trimming it a bit. You're watching the RPMs, you want to make sure they're the same. It does synchronize the RPMs. I'll show you the controls in a bit and how they do synchronize. But the controls do synchronize. Um, but they only keep the RPMs within about 10% or so of each other. So if you're running 3,000 RPMs, you know, they, they could be two or 300 RPMs off. Um, you know, maybe, maybe even 50 or 100 is pretty common. And the problem with that is you get like a resonance frequency, you get an oscillation when you're listening to the sound of the engine. It's kind of annoying. And you want to make sure that the trim roughly about and running the same RPM. So to do that, you actually can tweak the trim a little bit and you can get these RPMs to run exactly the same RPM and you get a nice hum out of both the engines running. And you'll see the slip indication is you know, kind of what you're really trying to control. So really nice screen to run the boat. That's normally what I, I, I use to run the boat. First button up here it actually does take you into um, back here. It does take you into the day and night mode, so if you are running at night, you can quickly push and swap back and forth. Another convenient button is this one right here. So all the engine data you might possibly want is actually on this screen from RPM to fuel flow, of course. I always look at oil temperature and coolant temperature as well. Um, of course, fuel pressure, battery, and things like that. So you can really look at a lot of information and data about the engine here. When I had the overheat, for example, I came here, I had to look at my starboard engine, so I went over to starboard, and I was able to look at why um, is my starboard engine overheating, and it was just the coolant, it turned out. I was actually low on coolant. My engine temperature was actually fine, and I could compare the two by switching back and forth and looking at it and saying, well, what, what's the difference here? So another really nice screen with a lot of data on it allows you to go ahead and look at all the information going on from the engines right from this little screen. And you can see how intuitive it is. The back button takes you back to the main button. Um, if I go up here, I can go ahead and look at my fuel tanks. So you can see I have a total of 391 gallons on board. The Yellowfin 36 foot has three tanks. It has two saddle tanks on the left and right hand sides and a center tank that's actually a 200, uh, sorry, a 300 gallon center tank. Um, so I've used about you know 70 or so gallons or 67 gallons or so of the center tank so far. Uh, right now I'm running both engines off the center. You can configure the, the engines to run off any one of the tanks you want. So I can run off both the sides or a side in the center, whatever I want to do. Um, right now I'm running off center. I'm using these two side tanks as essentially my reserve tank. So if I go far offshore and I want to make sure I can make it back, so I'm using so. But um, very intuitive screen as well. You can reset the trip button, uh, you know, fuel used here in the corner. Um, miles per gallon, of course, the range gives you if the boat was actually under underway, it would be able to calculate these values for you. Um, so very intuitive screen system. Back to the, the screen you use the most. This was the, the other uh, button we were talking about. And then of course it allows you to get to some of the faults and stuff. So nice way uh, to, um, to uh, run the boat. It's a really nice screen, very intuitive, very simple to use while you're underway. Uh, highly recommend not only the engines themselves, which of course sound amazing, a lot of a lot of uh, great performance out of them, great fuel economy, um, just a lot, a lot of fun uh, running with these engines. You're, you're sort of very, um, very conspicuous when everybody comes into a marina 
they're always staring at you and want to look at the engines they want to come over and talk to you it's a lot of fun but it's not just about the engines it's actually about the whole package it's quite frankly about the electronics that are on the boat it's about the the service that um, seven marines giving you they um, give you their personal cell numbers they call you uh, to make sure everything's doing well when i had an inch an issue i called up uh the, you know the, the vp of operations directly uh, he got back to me within a few minutes told me what was wrong with the with the boat and kind of helped me diagnose it and stuff so they come out to the dock they help me uh, you know look over the engines and configure up the the joystick system that's on the boat things like that so just an amazing company so far very very impressed the electronics the engines themselves the whole package but um since there wasn't any videos online about the electronics i thought i would share this with you guys maybe now someone else will post a couple videos of their own uh, experience with it as well hope you guys are all doing well hope you guys have a good holiday and i will hopefully talk to you uh, in my next video which should be about the control system